Today we're taking a nostalgic trip down memory lane to explore one of the most iconic TV show sets of all time, Monica's Kitchen from the beloved series Friends. As we delve into the interior design concept of this famous kitchen, we'll uncover the six different design elements used along with the messages they conveyed and one major design flaw. So grab your central perk coffee and let's begin. Welcome back Remodel Lights. I'm Dave with Remodel Media. Since 2005, I've helped people put together kitchens, baths, outdoor kitchens, and various other home renovation projects. I'm on a mission to eliminate remodel regret, and I do that by bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and products for your home remodel. So if you're new here, follow along. We'll have some fun. I'm calling this series Remodeling Hollywood. Like most sitcoms, the show Friends takes place primarily over four sets. Central Perk, Ross's apartment, formerly the apartment of Ugly Naked Guy, uh, Chandler and Joey's apartment, and of course, Monica and Rachel's apartment. There are some other sets used occasionally, but these are the main ones. So design element one falls under the category of color scheme. One of the first design elements that catches our eye is the eclectic but inviting color scheme. The kitchen boasts a mix of tones, predominantly brick red, and seafoam green. These colors should come as no surprise. They are in New York City, one of the oldest cities in the U.S., with the area first being colonized by the Dutch in 1608, and humans have been building with bricks since about 7000 BCE, so a long time ago. The view out the window is also a neighboring brownstone, just to make sure you get that this is in New York. Of course, the other color predominantly featured is the seafoam green and the cabinets and window trim, with the odd exception of the cabinet above the fridge, which looks like an afterthought, and we'll get to that in a minute. Seafoam green was a very popular color starting in the 50s, which makes sense considering Monica's grandmother was born around 1907, meaning she was part of the greatest generation, the generation that mainly gave birth to the baby boomers. We know this because Monica said, This place is really my grandmother's. <laughs> I got it from her when she moved to Florida. Otherwise, I could never afford a place like this. So if the landlord ever asks, I'm an 87-year-old woman who's afraid of her VCR. Most people only get to remodel once or twice in their lives, so a visually up-to-date kitchen remodeled when her grandma was 43 and most likely financially stable makes sense. You know, it kind of makes me think, what would that kitchen look like today? If they had a cast of 20 something today in their grandma's kitchen that was remodeled 40 years ago, I think we'd see some off-white or beige walls with honey spiced oak cabinets and probably white tile countertops. What do you think? Uh, you can still get green kitchens to this day Interestingly, in 2022, we saw an uptick in green kitchens, specifically sage green by Shenandoah cabinets. That was probably my most popular green kitchen cabinet by far. These colors create a sense of comfort and familiarity, mirroring the close-knit relationships shared by the characters. It conveys a message of homeliness, making it a place where the characters can truly be themselves. Design element number two, layout and functionality. The kitchen's layout is a perfect example of efficient use of space. It's not excessively large, but every inch is maximized for functionality. There's a place for everything and everything in its place, which probably lends itself well to Monica's enthusiastically organized personality. The open plan design seamlessly connects it to the living area, promoting interaction amongst the characters during meals and gatherings. This layout conveys the importance of togetherness and highlights the friendships that were the heart of the show. Of course, it also makes it easier on the film crew as well, having everything open and visible. Fun fact, did you know that the reason so many people have open floor plans today is because 20 plus years ago, DIY shows like my nemesis, the Property Brothers, made them seem so awesome. Uh, but the reason they used open floor plans was because it was easier for the reality TV crews 
True story. Another fun fact. Did you know in early episodes, there was a beam between the kitchen and the living room and it later disappeared, but was reinstalled whenever James Burroughs directed an episode as kind of an inside joke. Design element number three, vintage touches. Another notable aspect of the Friends kitchen is the inclusion of vintage touches from the retro fridge to grandma's copper cookware. These elements evoke a sense of nostalgia. The fridge is actually a real brand of fridge called International Harvester. Yes, the company known for making tractors and trucks also made refrigerators from 1947 to 1955, which also falls into our timeline of when this kitchen was remodeled. So good job on the set designers, way to pay attention to detail. The refrigerator division of the company was actually bought out by the Whirlpool Corporation. Another fun fact, did you know that the refrigerator in Monica's apartment actually worked and was kept stocked for the cast and crew? Now you do. If you wanted to recreate that look in your home with a similar fridge, you can do that today with uh, the Big Chill Classic Refrigerator, 33 inches wide, 68 and a half inches tall. It'll fit in most people's kitchens. It's available in multiple colors, including the classic white with metallic trim, just like Monica's. I kind of think the vintage touches were not only meant to indicate the hand-me-down way in which Monica got the apartment, but also to portray a desire to celebrate a simpler time and emphasize the character's transition to adulthood while holding on to cherished memories of the past. Uh, design element number four, personalization. As we take a closer look, we notice the personalized decor items scattered throughout the kitchen, the infamous Gladys painting above the door, the quirky frame from the broken mirror that hangs over the peephole, and the eclectic mix of magnets on the fridge. All of these elements reflect the individual personalities of the characters. Personally, I like the idea of the mismatched dinette set, the chairs that were changed over the seasons, but it was never an actual matching set. I think this carries several layers to it. First, it is my fan theory that maybe this set started out as a hand-me-down from Monica's grandmother. As I mentioned, Grandma Geller was part of the greatest generation, a generation of folks that saw the Great Depression firsthand and experienced severe economic hardship. This is the generation of waste not, want not, and it's still perfectly good, why would I throw it out? My wife's grandmother, for example, washed and reused Ziploc bags. Uh, they would probably be much more likely to replace one chair at a time over the years as they broke beyond repair. As the years went on, Monica probably kept the tradition up. Every time Joey plopped too hard in a chair, she'd replace it, uh, probably for similar frugality-related reasons. Remember, she wasn't always settled in her career and often is portrayed as less well-off than the rest of the friend. This personalization reinforces the message that this space is truly theirs, a place where they can express themselves freely, I also think it symbolizes their friend group, and even though they grow and change, they still come back to the table. Design element number five, natural elements. Incorporating natural elements such as potted plants, wooden furniture, is a key design feature in the friend's kitchen. One element that stood out to me was the butcher block countertops. Uh, ever since 1887, when Conrad Booz, a mill worker, uh, first installed a native sycamore countertop for his blacksmithing tools, people have been using it as a sturdy workspace. This, however, is one of two somewhat anachronistic elements in the show. I honestly suspect that Monica might have gotten her tendency towards cooking from her grandmother because in the 40s and 50s, laminate was all the rage. Uh, my fan theory is that this was a personal element added by Grandma Geller to make the kitchen easier to stand up to the rigors of uh, cooking and cleaning and cutting, etc. These elements bring a touch of the outdoors inside, creating a harmonious, uh, comforting atmosphere. It also conveys a message of balance and harmony, which aligns with the friendships and the dynamics of the group. And design element number six, the only major modern element. Uh, 
The Kitchen in Friends has one other major element that is anachronistic compared to the surroundings, and that is the range, which is visible from the very first episode. See, there's Rachel in her wedding dress on the phone, breaking up with Barry the dentist, and there is the range. It is clearly a 30-inch professional gas range, which these are fairly common today. In 1994, these would have been much rarer. Uh, while there are no discerning markings, I'm about 90% certain that this is meant to be a Viking gas range, and I have a theory on how it got there. So Viking Range is a commercial gas range company that started making their commercial products available for use in residential applications in the late 80s. According to vikingrange.com, something happened in 1993 uh, they introduced their first 30-inch wide, 24-inch deep range to their product line. In 1993, this would have been seen as pretty much the pinnacle of cooking power for the home chef. So picture this. You're Grandma Geller. You've lived a great life, been financially successful, and you're ready to retire and live out your golden years in Florida, hanging out with the other octogenarians on the lanai, thanking everyone for being a friend. Wait, wrong show. Uh, you're going to sublet your rent control department to your granddaughter who is aspiring to be a chef. Your 30-year-old O'Keefe and Merritt range is 31 and a half inches wide, and so you head down to your local appliance store, you tell the salesman, and he tells you all about the latest range to hit the market. Perfect for the aspiring chef. And wouldn't you know it, it's just an inch and a half skinnier than the one that you have, and it should slide right in no problem. Being the supportive grandmother you are, of course, you buy it and have it delivered just before she moves in. Which brings us to one interior design mistake that I've seen people make. You see, this commercial range is going to throw off a lot of heat into that small space, along with cooking fumes, oils in the air, etc., and as such would require adequate ventilation. In New York, those apartments are likely pretty well insulated. It tends to get cold there in the winter. So popping a window open isn't always going to be an option. Uh, not that it's a good option anywhere. You really need adequate ventilation no matter where you are. But I wouldn't put in anything under about 290 CFM, that's cubic feet per minute, hood. You could go for higher CFMs if you had adequate makeup air, something I explain in this video. Uh, but there you have it, the secrets behind the design of the Friends Kitchen. Its warm color scheme, efficient layout, vintage touches, personalization, natural elements, and multifunctional nature all worked together to create a space that truly felt like home. I hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss an episode. And remember, if you have questions, I'll be there for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some good information out of that episode. Go ahead and click here for more videos. Go ahead and click here to subscribe. And make sure you check out the description below for relevant links to some of the products that we discussed today. And leave your comments and questions down below because I love answering them. As always, I'll see you in the next one.